Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? Anyway, I told you guys I was gonna come back with another video and here I am. And this is a video of all what has been going on since my last video. I think that was seven months ago. So obviously as you can tell, if you well see if you watched my video before this, um, a lot has been going on. I said we moved cross country, we had a new baby, I'm going to touch bases on what before I had baby, when I had baby, when the moving situation, how the kids, you know, my hair, Scarlett's hair, Mason's hair, the whole thing. I even wrote some notes down so that way I won't miss anything and I won't miss any questions if you guys have any questions for me. But if, if I don't say everything... If I don't mention everything, please put down below, comment below, and I'll comment, I mean, I'll respond back. But anyway, first, um, after that last video, which was a reveal of the gender for Kennedy, um, life had, it was going down for me. It was just, it was a beautiful situation of being pregnant again and being able to go through the whole the whole thing again but um it was an unexpected pregnancy but it was it was a hard time emotionally for myself to wrap around i'm about to have another baby because remember i had cameron um a, you know a little over a year ago so it was it was i mean it was pretty tough having to wrap around my head that Oh my gosh, I'm going to have two little, little ones, you know, including Mason, which Mason, if you guys remember him, he is my second boy. He's four years old today. So happy birthday to him. If you guys can shout him out, let him see, you know, let him know that folks were saying happy birthday to him. But anyway, um, back to what I was saying, it was a hard time dealing with having another baby getting adjusted again and just within myself because i had thought that camera was going to be our last now were we doing obviously anything to prevent that no but in my head i was thinking okay no more babies let's focus on our four you know and let's let me get going with the things that i have been putting off for so long because you know um having a baby and you know just all what comes with it you know i've been a stay-at-home mom for what nine years now and been going back and forth teetering back and forth between school and then stopping school because when i'm pregnant it just seems like it just takes so much out of me and it's so hard for me to uh, focus i've tried it and yeah my grades weren't so good so i had to stop so anyway um that whole time had been a pretty tough time for me and not only that like you know just things that were going in my head you know it wasn't just only grasping the fact that i was having a new baby it was just what have i done with my life like i don't know about you guys when you're pregnant do you like do you go through a point in time where you know or just in general okay when you have put your life on hold for your children and i'm not saying that i you know i ain't happy with that i love my kids and i always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom especially while they're small like this because i i can't handle you know i wouldn't want to send them off to daycare while i'm having you know if i'm at work i want to be i wanted to be a hands-on mom and that's what i am but what i'm saying is you know you get to analyze in your life and you're just like what have I done with myself? You know what I mean? And I was feeling, I was just feeling sorry for myself, put it that way. And I just went through a period of time when I was just sad, okay? And um, nobody could get me out of that. It had to be myself. I had to get through it. I had to go through it. And what helped me was, honestly, knowing that it was, a, it was maybe about, I knew that we were moving soon, but as it got closer to the day that we were moving I don't know I just kept praying and, and just saying you know God I just hope and pray that this move is a new start for us 
You know what I mean? Not just for myself, but my marriage, my children. We just needed something new and different, new environment. Because we lived in California and I'm, I'm from California, Southern, but it's expensive. And I think that had a lot to do with it too. You know what I mean? Just, just all what comes with being an adult. So anyway, that whole deal. But once it got closer to having Kennedy, you know, and us moving, things just start, I start snapping out of it. And I just thank God because I needed myself back. And I felt like this move, moving from California back to the East Coast, we're in Virginia now, it just gave us and me as an, an, an individual a new beginning, a new start. And I needed that. I really need that. I needed it so bad. I just, it was just a lot going on out there in my head as well. But, um... Anyway, so jumpstart to having Kennedy. Her birthday is June 20, no, June 30. I'm sorry. My other daughter's birthday is June 26. And I was about to say her birthday, but no, um, Kennedy's birthday is June 30th. So um, I had her natural. Um, I did have, I did have her vaginal, but let me, let me say that again because, uh, I did not have, I had meds, okay, I did. I had the epidural, but I did have her natural meaning vaginal. And um, I was so afraid. And that was another thing that was building up in me because I have always, my last three pregnancies, yeah, it was my last three pregnancies, I had to get Pitocin. I had to get, um, you know, induced because none of my babies wanted to come. And, you know, they were just one they just did not want to come so i was so getting nervous the fact that oh my gosh i'm gonna have to get this done i was over my due date you know what i mean i'm like uh, doing anything and everything to jump start labor after my due date and just nothing was nothing was cutting it so at least that's what i thought nothing was but um all of a sudden all i remember it was the it was june 29th and I just started having contractions and I was like, yeah, whatever. This ain't nothing. It's Kennedy playing with me again, you know. She gonna get me all excited and, you know. So anyway, uh, so nothing happened, basically. It was just a few that was consistent for a while. And then it was like, Bleh. So, okay. So um, the next day, the day that she was born... So it was uh, six, I remember it was about between five and six a.m. And I kept having contractions. And um, I was like, oh wow. It was like nine o'clock and I was steady having them every five, between five, it started off 10 minutes, every 10 minutes and then went from five minutes and then it went down to four minutes, back up to five, you know, kind of teetered, but it was consistent, you know, and then my husband it was around 9 9 a.m and my husband was like you know what um i think it's time for us to go get some groceries because once you have kennedy we ain't gonna want to go grocery shopping because we didn't have no food in the house you know for the kids and stuff and we were like okay we're not gonna want to go after we have kennedy if this is the deal so um he was like i'm gonna i'm gonna take the kids and i'm gonna go grocery shopping I said, okay. He was like, let me know if they pro progress, you know? And I said, okay. So he went grocery shopping. I think they left about 10 ish. So uh, it was getting stronger. And I was like, she's playing with me. She's playing. Because I promise it's been. Ugh. So anyway, uh, all I know was, I think it was around 11, 11 or 12. Um, 11 yeah it had to be 11 a.m between or 12 p.m somewhere between there it started to get tough and so I, um of course i called my husband but he's in the commissary no reception i was like oh my gosh this what if this is the deal because it's starting to get stronger now and i just wanted to let him know and i was like how am i gonna get a hold of him you know so i was like okay let me just text message him and when he gets out of the commissary he's gonna see that it's progressed you know what i mean and then that means well you know he'll hurry up if anything so and also i told him make sure you you check your phone keep checking your phone tell benjamin keep checking his phone because i'll call either one of you guys or i'll text you guys 
So anyway, um, I hit up my homegirl, which she lives right around the corner. And I told her, I said, you know, hey, um, my contractions are um, starting to be consistent and they're, they're kind of getting stronger now. So if anything, can I count on you to take me to the hospital? Because BJ, that's my husband, is, um, is at the commissary with the kids. And, you know, there's no reception. She was like, oh, shoot. Yeah, I got you, girl. I got you. So I was like, okay, cool. I was like, I'll call you if anything. So anyway, I was like, okay, you know, I'm fine. But I'm hungry because if this, and all I kept thinking to myself is, if this is it, I need to eat. Because you know they don't want to have you eat until way after you have the baby and everything. So I was like, okay. I was on am. I was like, I don't feel like cooking nothing because, mind you, we had to get some groceries. So, uh... I was just like, okay, I'm going to go on Amazon delivery and I'm going to have some food delivered to the house. So, um, I have the food get delivered and no lie, it was a contraction and it hit me like no other. And I said, oh, mama. I said, okay. Okay, breathe through. You know how you do. And then I turned around and I was just like, if I have another one of these, you know, I might need to call my homegirl, which her name is. I'm not going to say her name, but I'm going to call my homegirl. So um, I started eating, and then I had another strong one. I said, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And you know that feeling, like any of my, my, my mamas, you know that feeling where it's just getting tight, and you just, you can feel it, you know, feel her get lower to the point that you, you not to the point you want to push yet, but it was getting to that point. So I was like, oh my gosh, okay. So anyway, uh, I called my homegirl up and I said, hey, um, they're getting stronger. I can't get a hold of BJ, you know, this and that. And she was like, okay, I got you, I'm coming. So um, she came and got me. We went to the hospital, which, um, military base out in San Diego. And um, once we got there, she, we got checked in and all that stuff. And she stayed, and I, uh, she stayed, and I think my husband, I think he got there maybe 30 minutes after, because mind you, he had all those damn groceries. He didn't know anything until he went outside of the, the commissary with the groceries and got that message from me. You know, because Tierra also hit him up saying, hey, we're going to the hospital type of thing. So he's like, oh my God, I got all these damn groceries. I don't want them to spoil, obviously. So he was like, he told my homegirl, I'm going to run to, um, I'm going to run to the house real quick and put all the cold stuff in the refrigerator and just leave everything out that can be left out, you know, whatever. So he, like I said, he got there maybe about 30 minutes later. But um, he got there in time. It was no problem or anything. I was just getting the epidural, which I don't know if any of my ladies that have problems getting the epidural because I've had issues where the epidural didn't, it failed on me two times. And I was so scared to go ahead and try to get the epidural again because I was thinking, what's the use when it's going to fail on me, most likely? You know what I mean? So um, I was just like, you know what? Let me just go ahead and do it. So that was a task itself because they had a hard time getting it in and finally they got it in and oh, everything was wonderful after that and then uh so everything was wonderful we had um Dee Dee, well we call her Dee, Dee if you saw the video before her name's Kennedy but we had Dee, Dee at 11 14 p.m so it was it was close to being you know the next day which is uh what was it uh shit is there 31 days no there isn't but anyway um so like i was saying like it was a, it was an experience let's just put it this way like i was just so happy to have her natural i mean you know without any drug i mean without any drugs when i mean natural i mean no pitocin okay so please don't you know come chew at chew me out saying you didn't have her natural what i meant was what i mean is i didn't need that jump start i didn't need pitocin so anyway, what else has been going on? How is the kids adjusting with Dee Dee? Oh, well, hold on. Let me tell you something. We had her. She was eight pounds and five ounces, 21 inches long. Oh my gosh. Um, gosh, what else? 
the kids are adjusting wonderful to her um, of course you know Scarlett you saw the video two videos before this the gender reveal how Scarlett was crying because she was just so excited to have a girl you know because she had been the girl for the longest so she definitely wanted a, a girl and I don't blame her because I wanted a girl too you know but anyway uh, the kids are adjusting wonderful Cameron which he's one years old he'll be two in November um, he's a he has adjusted so well to Kennedy um, he is such a big brother for him to be one you know we're well, going on two. he is such a big brother he wants to do everything he's always grabbing her pacifier now we have to hurry up and try to take it out of his hand because the way he's grabbing it we don't want that part being in his I mean you know you know the little little kids hands and stuff but he's always trying to get her pacifier and put it in her mouth or give me a diaper or try to we try to let him and you know help out by wiping her and you know wiping her face with her bib or you know certain things like that but he is all over Dee Dee that is that is gonna be that is gonna be Dee Dee's protector like they're all gonna be her protector but Cameron is that is his baby and i asked him is that your baby yes yes <laughs> i'm gonna have to let y'all hear him but anyway um mason adjusting well he's like he's probably like another baby but um he's adjusting well he he helps out and everything too but he's at that point where he's coming out of that um terrific threes you know he's four today but He's coming out of it. I'm starting to see some kind of maturity coming. He's about to start school, so I know that's going to um, really help a lot. But, you know, he's starting to get older and, you know, kind of want to do more of the older things now. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's not in the Goo Goo Gaga type of phase. You know what I mean? He's trying to be, you know, his individual self now. He ain't trying to be singled out as a little one no more. So, what else? If I look, keep looking down every now and then, it's because I wrote some notes down. I told y'all that. But anyway, um, uh, oh, do we want more kids? No. And that's going to bring to the next topic. No, we don't want more kids. Five is good enough. We're happy with our five. And um, at the hospital, I did get a tubal done. I got my tubes tied. If you guys don't know what a tubal is, just the way that they did it on me is they they clipped, they clipped and they burnt my tubes. So they had told me and they kept saying it. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to go ahead and get this done? Because the way that I know that it can be reversed, you know, and everything, but that's going to be like really expensive. But the way that they were explaining to me is the way that we're going to do it it's gonna be you you won't be able to have no more you know and i was like i'm fine with that we have five beautiful kids i kept saying i'm good he's good we good all right so anyway i got my tubes tied and um that was an experience itself because of being put down you know put under and then having um knowing that they're gonna put a tube down your dang throat which after that kind of had my throat scratchy which they were they told me ahead of time it was gonna be kind of it was gonna feel a certain kind of way but um yeah and they gave me med meds for all that which i don't know how anybody can pop some dang pills because um what did they give me Percocet. I don't know how anybody can pop some pills because I thought the next day, once we got home, they gave me um they gave me enough supply for it. And I was like, this is a little too much. And they were like, sweetie heart, you're gonna need it. And I said thing to myself, please, I can handle some pain. Yeah, no. Um, let me tell you, I come home and I'm like, okay, I'll just take an eight hundred, you know what I mean? An ibuprofen eight hundred. And um, my husband was like, are you sure that's all you're going to take? I said, no, I'm fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Let me tell you, I was sitting there like, oh, my God. What's doing? And then, you know, you're so sensitive in the belly area because they go through your um, your belly button. So I'm like, oh, my God. I said, where's that Percocet? Yeah, he was like, yeah, I told you. You should have went ahead and took it. So anyway, when they, when your doctor tells you, you need your meds you better not say i'm good 
because you might F up and think that you're good and walk out without a prescription or something like that and you be hurting. But thankfully I had them on hand so I was able to take. But um, that, that recovery right there, I, I mean, I was able to walk around and move around and I was able to hold duty, but uh, as far as like doing any heavy lifting or really like really doing, doing stuff, it took me about a good week after I got out of the hospital to really recover, um, to get moving, I'm going to say, you know, from that part, not the baby, having a baby because that's its own, own whole situation but I'm just saying from the actual surgery of getting the, my tubes tight that was that was pretty tough you know and being on that meds I cannot stand being on medicine so that was tough for me but um yeah if anybody's considering getting it done do your research on that make sure it is a decision that not only you want your um, significant other and unless you are single and that is just what you want because I understand kids are not for everybody and I would never push that on nobody. I would never say, girl, why you ain't got no kids? Because uh, kids are not for everybody.